I'm Snow and I'm playing to Thru Hike the Arizona Trail 2021. And today we're going to talk a little bit about updates, how I'm feeling, and we're going to try to address this. So sorry if it's a little echoey in here. We kind of have a very big room and there aren't, well now there is not that much stuff. I actually cleaned a little bit earlier, so that's good. So let's begin. some things and pick out what I'm going to be using for my through hike. Right on top, we got the bag because we just went snowshoeing. I'm going to take this pad. This is my day pack. This is an old one. This is my big Agnes tent, which I'll be bringing. This is my princess puppy. Zipper is kind of messed up right now, so we're gonna fix that. But uh, yeah, so it is now at the pretty much the end of February, and <laughs> that's kind of crazy. But my start date is still a little bit up in the air. Actually, some things were maybe about to change. I was gonna potentially have a hiking partner that was gonna come with me, and it's just really nice to be traveling with a partner. And there's always pros and cons of being by yourself or having somebody else to hike with. And the circumstances for this situation uh, had a lot to do with a job and a job that was <clears throat> essentially cut down on this person's hours. And so the thought was that, you know, if they're only working a couple days a week and they're not really saving that much money, that they would rather come and join me on this hike and be able to, yeah, just take some time off for reevaluating the situation where they felt like they had to get a new job just because there wasn't going to be enough time. Um, and luckily for them, they ended up getting a couple more hours. As right now, that's kind of what it sounds like. We're kind of still waiting to hear. So, I mean, it's a small probability, but it still could be a possibility. And for me, this is kind of like a, like a wait and see thing because when you're hiking with somebody else, there's a bunch of different factors that you kind of have to think about. And for this one in particular, it was kind of getting down there, if we were going to split the gear or not, and kind of what that was going to look like. And just kind of when their start date would be, because if they have hours they wanted to work, this is my quilt. Um, so as of right now, we're still kind of waiting, but I'm hoping for maybe like beginning of March, depending. And um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm kind of bummed. Uh, it's always nice to travel with somebody else and just, you know, what's that like into the wild quote, uh, like happiness is better share or something. And so I was kind of like bummed about that for a little bit. And honestly, I do kind of have some anxiety about going on trail, um, one, because of COVID, although the cases are decreasing, it's just kind of going somewhere else and just not having the accessibility that you might, or even just like medical care, just like different things that could come up. So I'm a little weary about that. And then just overall, you know, it's an adventure. I'm going on a new trip and traveling somewhere. Luckily, I have seen most of the Arizona trail before, so that does help ease my mind and I know what to expect, especially with areas of the desert. However, I do think this year is going to be more intense with the dryness and just not the reliability that 2019 had because actually right before I left in 2019, they had a bit of a snowstorm. So there was snow up at Miller Peak. And I'm pretty sure right now Miller Peak's at about 9,000. I saw some videos and there is snow there as well too. And it does get very cold also in Arizona. A lot of people are like, oh, it's gonna be so hot. And during the day it's hot but it's also very cold at night, so it's important to pack warm clothing and just make sure you have the things that you need. The desert, I love the desert. I think it's so beautiful, and I grew up in Southern California, and I think Edward Abbey really says it best, that it's just an amazing landscape, 
that's unlike anything else. It, it's very alien-esque, and he talks about it in uh, Desert Solitude, which is a great book. So maybe, maybe I'll put some quotes up by Edward Abbey just to like inspire people. excited for that but you know I do have some nerves overall and every time I kind of go to do an adventure like even leaving for college you know that's a huge step and I was playing sports in college so it was another intensity level and then I left the Peace Corps and I was in Southern Africa for two years and then I also went to Spain and I did the PCT and the Arizona Trail by myself and every time I do it I, I have that fear and I think it's a very rational feeling. But I've also heard before too, you know, the things that you're afraid of, of are the best ways to challenge yourself and the best ways to grow. So I know in the back of my mind, if I'm, you know, a little anxious or a little fearful, that that's going to be an experience that's going to help me grow and to get better. And that's just, you know, human nature. Especially what happened with on the AT, was it like two years ago? with that guy who killed one of the hikers, and I think he almost tried to kill that other girl. So there's definitely real threats, and being a female traveling by myself, I know that my experience is going to be different if I was in a group or if I had another, even another girlfriend with me, but like another male, it would be a different experience than if I was by myself. There's just security in you know numbers and being with somebody else, and, it's not so much of like getting lost with somebody else, it's like feeling like that's an adventure. So I'm trying to have that mindset and I think part of it is nervousness, but I think part of it is excitement too. And especially over the last hmm, couple days, I'm just ready to kind of disconnect and I feel like when I go out on the trail, it just helps me see like the best parts of the world and the best parts of people and it's a reset for what is valuable to me and also the basics of what you really need. So I'm hoping to get that and as my start date gets closer and closer and I realize I have a lot to do because I still haven't packed that much, um, I don't know. I I have a bunch of mixed feelings, I guess. Oh, so that's kind of how I'm feeling a little bit. And now I'm just trying to prep this an old poncho, which we can still use at some point. And these are a couple of restuff bags that I've gotten before too. An old filter in here. Some earplugs. I think those are good. And, ooh, a sewing kit. That's a pretty good thing to have. I usually sew at least like one or two things because something always happens. Some sunscreen, definitely gonna be bringing that. Extra snacks. Let's get this in here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so isn't this so funny? We got this at a, uh, a gift exchange, I think last year. And I just think it's so funny. I know that um, hip belts or, you know, the fanny packs are in again. And this one's just so funny. <laughs> you can put like your phone in there, like some treats maybe. I honestly might bring this, I don't even know. You know sometimes when you're going through your gear and you're like, oh, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take that. So we'll see. Toilet paper, a mask. Controversially, this is a little bit of a pillow that I like to bring to use for, you know, when you're on planes, but I've used it hiking before and as a sleeping pad and I like that. Binoculars, I don't know. This is a garment puppy. I'm not going to bring that to my own. Micro spikes. With some toilet paper on them. I'm not gonna bring these. I don't think there's gonna be too much though. There probably will be up at Miller Peak, but I think it's gonna be not that much. And I'm gonna have my trekking poles. So I'm not too concerned with those. Snow goggles. Ooh, stove. I am gonna bring a stove because 
because I like to have warm food at the end of the night. And <laughs> I don't know, it's so fun to see kind of what people like to bring for food. And I'll probably do a whole little episode about like what kind of food people like and you know, different kind of meal ideas because when I was first starting, I had like no, I had no idea. I mean, there's like those backpacker meals, but they are super expensive and they're more like a treat. So I don't usually buy those. Honestly, like I'm pretty basic and I love a good ramen. At the end of the night, I'll have ramen. Maybe I'll put a little bit of like potato, instant potato in there. And I like to make it like a potato soup. And I think that's great because in normal life, just the sodium content of that is so high. But when I'm through hiking, I like crave salt and it's got carbs and I'm drinking some water. So that's usually my go-to for dinner, but I'm gonna try and have a better diet through hiking. Usually you get what is the easiest, the lightest, and the most calorie dense. So like, <laughs> I met this girl in 2019, she is so awesome. And she was telling me that she packed out those um, like tubs of frosting. It was just like such an OG move. I had never seen it before and I was amazed. And I mean, <laughs> yes, a tube of fr like frosting is not like the best or a whole tub of frosting is not the best thing in your normal life. But when you're through hiking, you're usually burning a ton of calories and that's what you're just trying to get, like sugar, calories, something that's gonna like make you feel better. Like even when your feet hurt and your legs are tired and your sunburn and just a variety of things. So I think that was so funny. I don't know if I'll I'll go there myself, but hey, maybe I'll just I'll give her a shout out and I'll do a section with that or something or another. So we got another puppy in here. Oh, this is like a miscellaneous bag, classic. And these are usually reused bags that we have. Um, headlamp. So I actually did not bring one of these in 2019. And I don't really like headlamps that much. I bring them because it's a, just a cautionary thing it's important to have. Um, my theory is that I usually have my phone with me and I have my battery charger. So if things do go wrong, I can just use my phone as my light. However, it's difficult to like hold, so I probably will bring one, maybe, but I do not like night hiking, personally. I like to be able to see where I'm going, and unless I'm trying to, like, unless I have to, I usually try to get up early and then continue to hike, so, I don't know. We'll see if I end up bringing it or not, because then you gotta bring batteries, too. You know, so not old Troy, you gotta bring batteries. Ah, uh, water system. Gonna bring a Sawyer squeeze. That is coming with me. And I actually need to clean this definitely before I go. So we have a couple in here actually. We did buy a newer one, but I'm not totally sure where that is. And um, for the Sawyer squeezes, uh, you actually don't even need to bring like one of these. It fits um onto your like onto most smart water bottles or like you know life water or something similar to that and if you get one of those squirt water bottles you can use that to flush your filter while you're on trail so that's kind of like a little bit of like don't get rid of that like you might want that um that squeezy top or something i'll see i think i'll one of these yeah you can cut it looks like this i mean it's essentially just like when you're drinking a water bottle like a sport one you can just push it and it'll give you some water. So I think I might do that. And then for some reason my O-rings, um, you can kind of see right here. The O-ring is just like outside here. My O-rings usually fall out and it's really annoying because it doesn't make the seal all that well when you're trying to filter your water. So I'll probably bring an extra one of those just in case to make sure that it fits really tight. And I think those two might be the only thing I might bring. I might bring a platypus. But just because it is the desert and I do want to have some storage, I think I'll get the smart water bottles that have like a liter and a half. Because that's like three liters just with having two of those. And then maybe like a spare. Um, I need 
need to look a little bit more about like how much water carry you need to have because on the PCT there was like, a couple bigger sections and there are caches and like thankfully some of the trail angels on the Arizona Trail are amazing and they provide you some water but you know you should never rely on that and especially with this year with COVID things are just very different so we will see. But we got a bug repellent and a bug net. I'm not going to really need those. These are a bunch of stakes and a compass. And old tent stakes too. So I'm not going to bring those. Old tent hand warmers. I actually think I might bring a couple of these for my first couple of days. On trail in 2019, I had a couple, I met a couple friends, they're called the Woo Boys, and I'll talk more about them probably when I'm on the hike because I'll be thinking about them. And I met them my first day, and we ended up going into town to Patagosa together, which was awesome. And they're all um, older men, about like 39, who had families, and they were just out, they're like weekend warriors, and they were just out for the weekend, and we met up. And they ended up giving me some of their hand warmers, and I definitely use them. Some of the times that I was just sleeping in my sleeping bag, but like my amenities got extremely cold, like my hands and my feet. And I think I mentioned before, I sleep very cold and I like to have particular things for when I am sleeping, like my sleeping clothes, my sleeping socks, and I don't really hike in those. And I know for other people, like a bunch of my guy friends, they usually sleep warmer than I do. And they don't really, they sleep in their hiking clothes or they, you know, they take off their hiking shirt and they like lay it out or something. Like they don't really need as many layers as I seem to need, but it's like a comfort thing for me. And if I don't sleep, I am not gonna have that great of a morning. You know, you can power through it. And the endorphins really help, but it's so important to get a good night's sleep. And I know it's gonna be pretty cold the first couple of days on trail at least. And once we dip back down to a lower elevation, it's probably gonna be warmer. But just for me, I probably will throw in just an emergency couple. because I think it will help. Keep thinking there's gonna be like some animals in here because it's like shifting, but I think it's just me. So we have not cleaned this out in like a long time. Uh, these are some rain pants, not gonna bring those. And just another pair of like micro spikes, which we're not going to need. So I'll probably look through um, and start putting together what I am going to keep and then do a whole gear list and talk a little bit more about like some of the things that I am going to pick up. Hopefully in the next week, two weeks, I don't know. Wow, that's crazy. So I guess that's kind of it for now. I'm just going to kind of clean this up and that'll be it. But okay, if you are watching this, uh, out of the five people who do watch, which is fine, uh, let me know, should I bring this or not? I like, kind of love it. I think it's just kind of fun. Uh, and this is kind of one of those things that I say too, of like, you know, bring what you have. And I don't know, it's nice to have something that's like will make people laugh, you know, or make yourself laugh or just a little bit of humor and just not the same exact thing that everybody else has with the same exact gear. and. I don't know. I think that's how people get their trail names a lot of the time as well, too, is that they have something kind of special or something that stands out and it makes you think of them. So, okay, this is going to be it for now and wish me luck. Thanks so much. Bye.